So I wanted to give you guys um, a few more examples. Uh, using uh, prefixes, as well as um, doing some calculations using sig figs uh, and dimensional analysis. So like I said in class, you guys just have to know all of the prefixes. But we'll do a few examples um, that will hopefully help you review that. So this question says, an object measuring Zero point four five zero zero kilograms will have a mass of blank grams. So in this question, we have to convert from grams to kilograms. The conversion from grams to kilograms, I'm going to write it up on top here, is that for every one kilogram, there's 1.0 times 10 the positive three grams. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. So I'm going to set up um, my conversion here. We have kilograms in the numerator, so we'll have kilograms in the denominator over here, and then we'll have 1.0 times 10 to the three grams. Kilograms cancels out. We're left, left with 450.0 grams. So we haven't reviewed sig fig rules yet, but why don't we just take a moment to do that? Um, so the reason why I have four sig figs here is because in our original problem, there's four sig figs. So if you remember, um, for sig figs, if you have Numbers that, let me get this focused in here a little bit better. All right, that should help. If you have um, numbers that are non zero, all of those digits are significant. So if you had 457.8, there would be four significant digits there. If you have zeros between numbers, those are significant. So if you have 1005, all four of those digits are significant. So this would have four sig figs all right here, four sig figs. This one also has four sig figs. If you have zeros to the left of the decimal, those are not significant. So if you had 0 0.023, this would just have two sig figs because this zero is not significant. If you have zeros to the right of a decimal, like 1.500, those are significant, so this is going to have four sig figs. And we also talked about um, ambiguous numbers. So if we had a number like 5200, for example, this is ambiguous, we would say it has at least two sig figs, but we aren't sure about these two zeros there. We also talked about exact numbers, and so if we have things that we can count, like we used an example in class of pennies, if you had seven pennies, you have an infinite number of sig figs because you're certain, um, because you can count them. It's a discrete object. We also talked about um, conversions and how those are considered to have infinite number of sig figs as well. All right, so let's look at this next problem now that we've reviewed sig figs. It says a human hair is 80 
uh, micrometers. People call um, micrometers microns in science oftentimes. So a human hair is 80 microns in length. Express this in millimeters. So we're going to go from microns to millimeters. And so what we might want to do is go through meters first. So the conversion from microns to meters is for every one micron, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And then for one every one millimeter, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Microns and millimeters are both smaller than meters, so it makes sense that these have negative exponents. So let's set up our problem. So we have 80 microns, and for every one micron, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Microns are going to cancel out. We want meters to cancel out next. So 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters for every one millimeter meters cancels out. And if you see that um, the difference between millimeters and microns is 10 to the um, uh, minus 3, then you can solve the problem that way. But this is just a, a more uh, sort of step-by-step -step way to solve it. So we get point Oh, 8 millimeters and this is a fine answer our starting number has one sig fig at least one and so it's fine that our answer just has one as well if you wanted to rewrite this in scientific notation you could write 8 times 10 to the minus 2 millimeters. Either way is fine. Okay, so let's look at um, another way that you might be expected to apply these prefixes. Um, this was taken from another test or a previous year's test. It says which measurement represents the largest quantity. So you would be expected to evaluate all of these numbers. Um, you can convert each one of them to the base unit. So you could convert what's shown in A here, these kilograms to grams. B, you wouldn't have to convert. C, you can convert to grams, D to grams, and E to grams as well. Um, and we can do that really quick. So let's look at A here. So we have 4.73 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms. For every 1 kilogram, there's 1.0 times 10 to the positive 3 grams. The kilograms are going to cancel out. And we're going to let, be left with 4.73 times 10 to the 3 grams. Let's look at C, 47.3 milligrams. For every one milligram, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 grams. So this is going to be a smaller number. And I'm just going to write 0.473 here. Let's look at D. We have 4,730 nanograms. For every one nanogram, we have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 grams. Well, I can see already that this one is going to be even smaller. And then let's just look at E to make sure we have 4.73 times 10 to the third micrograms. For every one microgram, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 grams. So this is going to be 
seven three times ten to the minus three grams. And so let's look at B because um, that's in grams as well. That's 4.73 times 10 to the minus 4 grams. So our answer is going to be A. A is going to be the, the largest quantity. So let's look at this next problem. It says a red blood cell has a diameter of 7.5 microns. What is this diameter in nanometers? So we're going from microns to nanometers. The conversions that we want to use, we want to go through meters. So for every one micrometer or micrometer or micron, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 meters, and then for every one nanometer, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So 7.5 microns times, we want microns in the denominator here, 1 micron for every 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Our microns are going to cancel out, and then we have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 meters for every one nanometer. Our meters are going to cancel out. Um, and so we're going to be left with 7.5 times 10 to the positive 3 nanometers for our answer. So you just have to um, essentially memorize all of those conversions and be able to use them. In chemistry, we'll use um, mostly uh, the smaller end of those conversions. So it's important that you know milli, micro, nano. Um, and of course, if we're going from grams to kilograms, you would need to know kilo as well. But I would memorize them all for the purposes, purpose of your, of your exam. Okay. Let's talk about temperature and temperature conversions. So if we go from Kelvin, um, or if we have a Kelvin temperature, or sorry, if we want to find a Kelvin temperature and we have a Celsius temperature, we add 273.15 to the degrees Celsius. If we want to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit, we use the degrees Fahrenheit equal to 9 fifths times the degree Celsius plus 32 to find degrees Celsius. We use 5 ninths times degrees Fahrenheit minus 32. So let's solve our problem doing this. It's good to solve um, these problems because we have both addition subtraction, as well as multiplication, division, sig, fig rules um, in play. So let's look at this one. It says express the temperature 275.18 Kelvin in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. So to find the degrees Celsius, we're going to subtract Two hundred and seventy three point one five from this. I'm just going to mark out the unit because we're going to be in degrees Celsius here. So two seventy five point one eight minus two seventy three point one five is two point zero three. So that's our degrees Celsius. We started um, with two places past the decimal. We have two places past the decimal, so we're fine with um, the sig figs there. So let's convert this into Fahrenheit then. So we have degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths times our Celsius degrees plus 32. So I'm going to multiply this by 9, divided by 5. 
we have 3.654 plus 32. Now we've just done multiplication here. So this is going to, um, the sig fig rule for this is going to be that we have to have three significant digits. I'm going to write more than three here because I'm not going to round until the end, but I'm going to make a note here that my answer is only going to have two places past the decimal because now I'm going to add and then three, six, and five are my significant digits from the step on top. So when I add this to 32, I get 35.654, and then I'm going to round this to 35.65. Those are the Fahrenheit degrees um, that that temperature is. Okay. So let's talk about density, which is our next, our next topic. Density is mass per unit volume. It's essentially a measure of compactness. So we have density is equal to mass divided by volume. Um, we can rearrange this formula to solve for either mass or volume. If we wanted to solve for mass, we would have density times volume. And if we wanted to solve for volume, we would have mass divided by density. Common units for density, grams per liter, grams per milliliter, grams per cubic centimeter. Please keep in mind that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. And so let's solve a density problem. Um, so let's look at this first one. Osmium has a density of 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter. What volume in cubic centimeters would be occupied by a 21.8 gram sample of osmium? So we have um, that we're solving for volume. So we need to find volume, which is mass divided by density. We're given a mass which is 21.8 grams. We're given um, a density, 22.6 grams per cubic centimeter. Grams are going to cancel out. Cubic centimeters will be in the numerator. 21.8 divided by 22.6 is 0 0.9646 cubic centimeters. And to write this in the correct number of sig figs, this is division. So we use um, the total number of sig figs for each one of these has three. So our rounded answer is going to have three. So 0.965 cubic centimeters would be the correct answer. So let's look at this next density problem. Iron has a density of 7.9 grams per cubic centimeter. What is the mass of a cube of iron with the length of one side equal to 55.0 milliliters, millimeters? So we want to find mass. So we're going to have density times volume. We have a density. Our units for density are in grams the units here are in grams per cubic centimeter. We're given a volume, or we're not given a volume, but we're given a side of a cube so we can calculate the volume. But um, this is in millimeters. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cube 55 millimeters. And then we're going to have to convert millimeters cubed into centimeters cubed. And if you guys remember, um, in order to uh, convert cubed or squared um, things, you have to cube or square or whatever, raise it to the same, you have to raise your conversion to the same power. So we have one 
millimeter is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meters and 1 centimeter is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. We're going to want to cube each one of these. When you cube something that has exponents, you can, or if you are raising something that has an exponent here, like 10 to the minus 2 to a certain power, all you have to do is multiply those two numbers together to get um, your new number. So this becomes 1 cubic millimeter, because 1 cubed is 1 is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 cubic meters. And then this becomes 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. So now we have our cubed conversion factors to go from millimeters to cubic millimeters to um, cubic centimeters. So let's cube 50. 5.0, that's going to equal 6. Now that we have this number, we can convert it into cubic centimeters. So I'm just going to rewrite it here. Millimeters is in the numerator, so millimeters is going to be in the denominator here. We have 1.0 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Millimeters cancels out. 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters is 1 cubic centimeter. This is 166.375 cubic centimeters, and now we can plug that in um, with our density in order to find mass. So mass is going to equal 7.9 grams per cubic centimeter times 166.375 cubic centimeters. The cubic centimeters will cancel out. We get 1,314.36 grams. This, um, all of these things just required multiplication and division. And so 7.9 and 55.0 are what we use to determine our sig figs. 7.9 has two. And so it's the smallest one, 55.0 has three. So our answer can only have two sig figs, so it's going to be 1,300 grams. Um, a clearer way to write this would be 1.3 times 10 to the third grams because these two zeros are ambiguous. Um, so we would say this has at least two sig figs, but we're not certain about these other ones. But this makes it clear that there are only two sig figs, writing it 1.3 times 10 to the third grams. Okay, so let's look at um, a sig fig calculation here. So we re reviewed the rules already, and we've been using it, but let's, uh, let's do these two calculations. So the first calculation, we have 10.07 plus 7.395, all divided by 2.5. So let's do what's in the parentheses first. This has two digits past the decimal. This has three. Our answer um, has only the significant digits for this, uh, for this one, because it has two, but we're going to carry them. We're not going to round. Um, is what I'm trying to say. So we have 10.07 plus 
0.65 divided by 2.5 still. Remember that this only is supposed to have two places past the decimal, so we only have four sig figs here. We have two sig figs there, so our answer can only have two sig figs. I get 6.986. So I'm going to rewrite this as 7.0. So 2 sig figs, 7.0. Let's look at this next one. We have 5.46 times 10 to the second grams plus 4.991 times 10 to the 3 grams. These are written in scientific notation and we're doing either addition or subtraction. We're doing addition, but um, if you have things in scientific notation and you're doing addition or subtraction, you need to write them in standard notation so you can look at the number of places past the decimal. In this case, there's not going to be any places past the decimal. So you have 546 grams plus 4,991 grams. 546 plus 4991. This is equal to 5,537 and that's going to be our final answer um, because it doesn't have any places past the decimal and neither of our numbers that we were adding did either. All right, let's just do one more of these. So we have 1.779 times 23.56 minus 2.3 divided by 1,234. I'm just putting this into standard notation from scientific notation. We're going to do what's in this parenthesis first. I'm going to write it below, 1.779 times, we have 23.56 minus 2.3, 21.26. Keep in mind that we only are going one place past the decimal because we just subtracted in this step. I'm keeping this number because we don't round until the end, but this only has three significant digits. And we have 1,234. This has four sig figs, four sig figs, but this one only has three. So when I multiply and divide these, our answer can only have three sig figs. So times one point. 779 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 0.0306, 4, 9, 5. So we need our answer to have three sig figs, so I'm going to round this to 0 0.0306. That's going to be our final answer. We also talked about accuracy and precision. Accuracy being the closeness of a measurement to the actual value of that um, thing, and then um, precision being the closeness of a series of measurements to one another. So let's just look at this graph here and determine what is accurate and what is precise. So let's look at student A. Student A made three measurements, they're in yellow. Those three measurements are really close together. So this is a precise set of measurements, but the true mass is a lot different. So this is precise, but not very accurate. This, on the other hand, is not very precise. You can see all three of these measurements differ. If we were to take the average of these three, um, I, it would still be um, below the true mass by um, at least 
uh, uh, the tense place here. So this is neither precise nor accurate. This set of measurements, on the other hand, is both precise and accurate. So when you're evaluating whether or not something is precise or accurate, what you want to do is you want to you want to look um, first of all how um, many places past the decimal there are. So in this one, there's three significant um, digits. There's three places past the decimal. If we were to take an average of these, it would be around 3.350. 0. 0. 0.350 is quite a distance away then from 0. 0.370 because it has um, this place being significant. Okay. So let's look at dimensional analysis. So for dimensional analysis, we're just converting from um, one unit to another. Remember that our conversion factors don't play a role in determining significant figures. So for this um, problem here, we have that we're converting from gallons to liters. We're given gallons, how many gallons that we have, and we want to find out how many liters that we have. We are given a conversion factor. So we have one gallon for every 3.7854118 liters. Gallons are going to cancel out. 30.0 has three significant digits, so my answer is just going to have significant digits. So it's going to be 114 liters. So remember when you're doing dimensional analysis that you'll have some starting units that you have and then you'll have some sort of conversion factor to get to your desired units. So let's look at the next question. It says an average adult has 5.2 liters of blood. What is the volume of blood in cubic meters? So we're going from liters to cubic meters. So remember I told you that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. So we can use that relationship in this particular unit conversion. So the first step is if we were to take liters to milliliters. And then if we knew milliliters, then we can convert them to cubic centimeters. And if we knew cubic centimeters, then we can convert them to cubic meters. So I'm going to write all the conversion factors for those. So for every one liter, oops, for every one liter, we have 1.0 times 10 to 3 milliliters, because there's 1,000 milliliters in every liter. For every 1 milliliter, there's 1 cubic centimeter. And then for every 1 cubic, or for every 1 centimeter, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. We need to cube this. So this conversion factor is going to be 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the, multiply those two numbers, minus 6 cubic meters. Now we're ready to solve this. So we have 5.2 liters times, for every 1 liter, 1 1.0 times 10 to the 3 milliliters. 1 milliliter is equal to 1 cubic centimeter, 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 cubic meters. Liters cancel out, milliliters cancel out, cubic centimeters cancel out, 5.2 times 1.0 times 10 to the 3 times 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6. 
0.0052 cubic meters. Okay. So I'm going to stop there. Um, but hopefully that gives you kind of a sense of um, at least some of the problems that you'll be asked, kinds of problems you might be asked to um, solve on the exam. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, and I have office hours on Tuesday from 1 to 3.